All right, I've got some other enameled wire here. This is 22 gauge. The big stuff is 19 gauge. Um, and 22 gauge seems to be a good size for this particular inductor. So I'm going to see if I can't put on something like 17 turns or or so to see to see what it does. See if it'll see if it'll take that many turns. It's starting to get kind of crowded in there. Let's see how we're doing here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one's not, not in there, right? Something's not right in there. I think. I think. I don't think they are put together right. Oh yeah, I've got I've got a knot in there. I gotta get that knot out. There we go. That looks better. That looks better. Neatness counts in toroids for sure. Okay, how many do I have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm getting about maxed out here in the middle. Maybe one or two more. Hmm. Well, let's uh, let's measure this just to see what we've got. Where are my snippers? Yeah, let's measure this to see what we got. I'm hoping the uh, core permeability is about the same as the other one, so let's uh, can you see what I'm doing over here. Wish I had a monitor that I could look up at, but then the camera's way above my head, so it's hard to see what's going on. What I need is a, is a monitor and a second camera that is mounted overhead looking straight down, kind of like a cooking kitchen. That would be nice. Okay. Let's see what kind of inductance we get out of this one. Eight microhenries. So yeah, so not as big as the the other one. Where's our book? Let's go to a book. Uh, let's see here. Okay, eight oh eight microhenries. Oh, that's a lot more. Oh goodness. That's right. These big ones only got up to two microhenries. This one's already eight microhenries. Wow! Well, that's pretty handy. 
uh, we won't have to put as many windings on it. Because I only need, for my design, I only need like 1.7 microhenries. So, wow. Uh, yeah, so maybe... Maybe the ratio of core to windings is much better on this one. Or maybe the permeability, permeability is much, much bigger. But 8 microhenries, wow. That's really, really good. Well, I'm excited. Uh, I will have to do a similar experiment on number of windings. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this one off here and then I will do from eight microhenries. I'll start unwinding it and make a, uh, and make a similar graph. That'll be good. All right, there we go. Uh, we can go from 0.2 uh, microhenries, which is just a wire by itself. And then with a one winding, it's 0.3, um, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.61, one and a half, two, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, here's the graph. And so, yeah, it's following a line again. So we can get anywhere from 0.2 to eight microhenries. Excellent. So yeah, I think I will build up a little tiny uh, one. Let's see, I need one, one and a half, let's see here, one and a half is five turns and two is six turns. So I need about five and a half turns. <laughs> so five turns, yeah, so I'll do five turns, five turns, I need three of these and uh, I did buy some. Uh, I did buy some of the correct sizes here. I will have to dig those out. But this is a. Uh, let's see. That's a six. I think that's a six eighty. So I can use two of those, and then I need something like a a three hundred on a on the input. 
And uh, the input isn't, yeah, here's a 270. So 270, 270 on the input. Yeah, here's another 270. So I think that'll be 270, 680, and then, uh, what did I say, five turns? Yeah, five turn, five turn, five turn. Uh, where's my, need a couple more of those. Excellent. All right, time to build. All right, I've prettied up my filter here. This is my old one. Uh, I think I'll get this thing to focus on it. Don't look at that stuff behind me. Uh, anyway, you can see uh, it's on a uh, has SMA connectors on it now, and it looks uh, it looks nice and pretty. So I noticed that the uh, the measurements were really uh, needing a good ground. Uh, otherwise, I was getting some strange reflections and stuff. So I'm using uh, my tracking generator uh, and spectrum analyzer to get a, a good sweep of it. And, and here you can see it's just really, really flat, and then it falls off. Uh, so I, I have a little marker there. It's kind of hard to see, but I have the marker at uh, 7 megahertz. So it goes out to about, uh, goes out to about 8.6 megahertz, and then it starts to fall off. And then down here at uh, 14 megahertz. At 14 megahertz, it's down 36 dB. And then it just keeps falling from, just keeps falling from there. So, uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very nice filter. So, uh, let's try out the other filter that I built. All right. So this one is the little inductors. And can I zoom in on that? Yeah, I can zoom in on that. So, yeah, so the little inductors and uh, again with nice SMA connectors on it and everything. So uh, let's hook that up. And all the values are similar. So let's give that a try. Oh, so you see this filter's a complete fail. <laughs> <laughs> it is a uh, it is low pass but it's low pass to like a megahertz I mean uh, let's see here let's it starts rolling off yeah right around a megahertz so uh, all I can figure out is that these cores are not meant for RF work uh, so yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, or my measurement was wrong. So remember that I said it needed... Um, so these, you can see the number of windings on there. I think there's 18, 18 windings on these. And I calculated that I only needed five over here. Um, and at five, if I add more... It'll even be worse. It won't let the high frequency go through. So it'll even be worse if I add more. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess I can try to remove some of these windings and see if I can get this, see if I can get this thing to move. But, uh, yow, it is just wrong, wrong, wrong. Now, I am using different capacitor types. I'm using nice micas here. And I'm using ceramics here. Uh, maybe that's a difference. I think what I'll do is I'll move these inductors over to this board. So we know it's apples and apples, just the inductors have changed um, and see if, uh, see if something else changes. All right, I've moved the uh, small inductors to the other board and it's doing exactly the same thing. So the capacitors aren't at fault. It is these inductors. So, uh, wow, I'm shocked. Uh, so once again, I don't know anything about toroids. <laughs> <laughs> so it must be that these uh, the permeability material of these uh, toroids just aren't just aren't right. They work at low frequencies. When I test them, I'm testing them at a kilohertz, and now I'm using them at seven megahertz. So uh, yeah, I think these guys just don't don't work. Hmm. All right. So uh, I used my uh, I used this board, and I've I've tried it with the little yellow uh, inductor. Uh, uh, toroids and I've tried it with the little blue toroids and they give exactly the same uh, results um, except the blue one's a little bit different so here's the blue here's the blue toroid 
from one uh, from zero to nine uh, windings, it goes up to uh, twelve point five uh, microhenry. So it has the highest permeability of everything, and um, you can see here in the uh, in the graph, it's it's the only one that's showing the actual square law. The number of windings to to inductance should follow a, a square law, and this one does. All the rest are, are 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 in the linear region. If you just measure them out here, they look linear, even though they might have a slight curve to them, but they kind of look linear. But this one goes all the way down and and, and shows the classic uh, n squared uh, uh, relationship. So uh, after digging around on the internet, I found that uh, these guys are really only rated to 800 kilohertz. <laughs> and so that's exactly what I was seeing in the measurements. I was seeing it starting to roll off right at one, one megahertz. So yeah, they, they, they match theory just fine. So these are gonna be great for using for RFI applications where you want to remove any RF from DC um, biasing and stuff or, or put them on cables and stuff like that to kill any, uh, to kill any RF, anything above one one megahertz will, will, will be attenuated by these guys. So anyway, that's what they're for. Um, I did find the yellow, the yellow white uh, in the in the data books. I forget what type it is, but it's only good to 800 kilohertz. The blue I really couldn't find anywhere. Uh, but every single manufacturer seems to use different color codes. So there's no, no standard, no standard for these things. Um, I'm now absolutely, con I'm now absolutely convinced that my um, my yellows here are, are type six. Um, so I've got a lot of the type six mounts, which are, which are the most, uh, I think the, I think they're the, they're going to be the most useful. The red, the reds, um, which is type two and the yellows, which is type six, those seem to be the most useful in ham radio, uh, you know, the HF frequencies. Uh, and, um, so, uh, next time at the store, I'll, I'll be a little bit more educated, um, but uh, I think everything is useful, just not for, just for not what I thought it was going to be useful for. I thought maybe yellows and yellows were going to be the same, but no, they're really, really different. Uh, the permeabilities uh, uh, are very, very different on these, uh, on these two cores. So anyway, there you go. I'm learning. <laughs>